Okay, so today um, I thought I'd read some more in my Bible about um, the story of Joseph. And I thought I would just see where it went. Yesterday was a, a really hard day. And the day before was incredibly difficult because we had another barrier come in. And we had some really painful news given to us. And you have to understand, you have to, when these things happen, you have to just go, what on earth, where, where are we going with this? And so I'll be honest, yesterday, I didn't spend time reading God's word. I just cried and prayed and shared my heart with Jesus. And it helps to just share, but it no answers came. And so today I'm like, I'm just going to read in the book of Genesis again and see where it takes me. And I'll take notes. And it was funny because even the way I wrote my notes was different. Usually, because I used to, you know, teach elementary school, they'll be all in perfect, perfect cursive handwriting. But today, it was in this very nice, neat, um, printed work. And so, what I see is, this is different. And there's some power in this. And I don't know why. I'm going to record it and post it. But if, if it's not for someone... And it's just for me, and maybe I'll just listen to it a bunch of times. But if you can get something out of it, please let me know. And if you think that someone could benefit from it, then let me know. Okay? So what I see here is in Genesis 39, 22 and 23, it says, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Okay, so he's been thrown in prison and his life has taken a huge pivot. <laughs> he's gone on a different path. So here's what I have. Joseph was stuck in prison. He was probably assuming he would get out soon because he was innocent and he didn't belong there. How long did he hold out hope that things would go back to normal? The different path he was on wasn't fully respected for a long time. Did he recognize and value the favor that he was given? Was he so used to God's blessing him that he didn't even recognize it anymore? Everything he did prospered, and the people in charge trusted him. He was in prison. He never got to take his chains off. He was always bound, yet he, he got great favor and they trusted him they trusted a prisoner and he probably just got used to that like yeah this is what happens to me but that's not normal how many times have we had a blessing in our life that we take for granted and we don't even see how big of a deal it is i do it all the time and then it says that um they threw the butler and the baker in the king's prison and it says that um, in verse 3, 40 verse 3, and he put them in the ward of the house of the captain of the guard into prison and placed where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and he served them and continued a season in ward. And I just had to stop. I think it maybe it's because uh, we spent a whole month reading um, about people who are powerful within the Black History Month. But I think a lot about slavery. I think a lot about being bound and in chains and being forced to do things that you don't want to do, but you don't have a say, you know. And so I just really got stuck by that. And, and it says here that Joseph served them. The baker and the butler were in a place where Joseph was bound. And he couldn't forget about his imprisonment because he could see it every single day. Yet he didn't allow his chains to keep him from serving others. I'm so convicted by reading this and by thinking about it, about how much I have left to learn. Trying to make others feel good. Would he have ever served others? Would he have ever served anyone or considered anyone else's feelings if he had not been sold into slavery? 
Imagine how selfish and self-absorbed he would have become without this change. He became the man he was because of the great difficulties. It changed his perception of life and his place in it. Joseph didn't know that his future was changing. He did know that he was a prisoner who was falsely accused and he was sold into slavery by his brothers. He never forgot that. And we know this because he brings it up again in verse 15. What we do in those waiting times is very important. He knew God had promised him great and marvelous things, but it was so far away from where he was that he thought he had to help the situation by sharing his story. God knew his story. Nobody had forgotten. He just thought, hey, if I tell it one more time, maybe this will be the time that I'm rightfully, you know, or that the wrongs are righted and I'm freed from this because this isn't the way it's supposed to be. He was still focused on his agenda. He was um, so focused on what had happened to him that he wasn't focusing on what and where he was and why he could be there. The butler and the baker didn't have their visions right away. They lived and learned about Joseph while in prison. It doesn't say how long. It doesn't say how long that they were there. Their nightmare continued day after day after day. And Joseph's like, more people to take care of. Okay. He didn't see that all of this was for a season. And when the time was right for God to move, not according to the butler and the baker, they would, they probably would have felt that the time was right, right away. <laughs> Who wants to be in prison? <laughs> Joseph saw something was wrong after they had had these dreams in the morning when he came. He, he noticed that they were sad. He knew them and he was concerned about them. And this is where I feel very convicted. Yes, he was still frustrated with his situation. Yes, he didn't want to be there, but he took his eyes off his own problems and tried to comfort those around him. If he didn't, it didn't change why Joseph was in prison or how Joseph didn't want to be there. But this is when things began to change. When Joseph tended to their needs, <clears throat> Instead of focusing on his own, his future was changed. What are we ignoring while we continue to stay focused on our own problems when our deliverance is right in front of us? What would have happened to Joseph if he continued to just brew on his own problems because they were really bad? How long would he have stayed in, pri in the prison, in the dungeon, bound, shackled, chained? Would he have ever gotten out? Is that what's holding us back? That we're too focused on what happens to us, not to just look around and see what's going on. Joseph brought up his case to the butler because he was still focused on his story instead of it being in history. See how I did that? Um, why did the baker not get a favorable impression interpretation though? That one was kind of hard for me. But not all people that come into our life will have a happy ending. Not all people are for our good. Maybe it is confirmation of God's sovereignty and how he enacts justice. Not all things have a happy ending. Why did the butler forget about Jesus or Joseph? Because Joseph wasn't ready. The butler completely forgot about Joseph because Joseph was still pleading his case, still focused on how he was wronged and how it needed to be righted. He still wanted his wrongs righted. This is the last time you see, in verse 15, this is the last time you see him bring it up. The next time it gets brought up is by his brothers when they're trying to apologize. And he immediately says, no, don't, don't even go there. Something happened. Something broke in those two years while he waited. He no longer pleads his case. He has accepted his new path. And he learned on it. And I think, I truly believe that's why he had to wait. So then there's the two dreams. There's the vision of the, there's the butler's dream where he um, had said there's a vine and there were three branches and it budded and her blossoms shot forth and the clusters thereof brought forth ripe grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand. I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And he says, okay, 
I see what this is. And in three days, you're going to lift up the Pharaoh's head and all right, he's going to lift you back up and you're going to take care of Pharaoh. Okay, so here's what I see. He has a favorable outcome here. And it's about produce. And I was like, ooh, that's really good. Vine and the branches. I see Jesus there. But what does it all mean? I see that these branches budded and then they blossomed and then they brought forth ripe grapes. And these grapes um, were, uh, were used then to pour into someone else's mouth directly. His job wasn't to get filled, it was to fill others. And it was going to be to a benefit and it was going to be sweet and savory and perfect. And it was going to go to help. Now let's look at what happens to the, to the baker. Okay, so then the baker has one and he's like, all right, if he got that good favor, then I'm going to too. And he says the uppermost basket was of all manner of baked meats and Pharaoh, for the Pharaoh and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head. And so what he says is within three days, Pharaoh shall lift up your head off of ye, and you will hang on a tree and the bird shall eat the flesh off of thee. That, that's really hard. And so I had to really think about this. And here's what I think. What you reap, you sow. Grapes blossom, become ripe, and enrich a person so that you can give to another. And the bread, it, what was produced, was fully produced, but it wasn't beneficial. And it would be carried away by scavengers, and he would be destroyed. So not only was all that was produced by him destroyed, he was destroyed. It says the flesh of the person would be eaten off of him. So nothing of this person would be able to continue. So it's all about the fruit. And not all people are for our good. Maybe Joseph was confirming that he was telling what God shows him, not what people want to hear. And by showing that he wasn't afraid to give the tough news and the, the tough interpretations that he could be trusted. We can't just be quick to give people soft and nice answers. We need to be careful that what we're saying is rooted in God's word. But I want you guys to think about one more thing. This changed his whole life, and it didn't cost him anything. All he did was be their friend, and he helped them, and he guided them, and he led them. And that is what eventually led him to his freedom. He was just a friend. He stopped focusing on his own needs and just looked up and said, hey, how can I help? I love that.